Cambodia is one of the three kingdoms of Indochina. It is bounded on the west and north by Thailand, and on the south by the Gulf of Siam and the China Sea. It is bisected by the Mekong, one of the great rivers of Asia. Geologically, it is a huge bowl of sedimentary deposits enclosed by the mountains of Vietnam to the east, its own coastal ranges to the southwest, and to the north, an escarpment along the Thailand border. The northern half of Cambodia is a vast region of open forest and one of the world's last great game lands. This almost trackless wilderness, but a minute spot on the Earth's surface, is the home of the rare Cambodian forest ox, or cupre. Knowledge of the habits and environment of this animal became the primary objective of the expedition. Almost all records of the cupre's distribution lie within the light green area of the map, a deciduous monsoon forest. An often park-like region of stunted trees, maintained as a subclimax by the agency of fire. In 1937, Dr. Achille Urbain, director of the Vincennes Zoo near Paris, described in a French scientific publication the calf of an unknown wild ox, procured by a French veterinarian in Cambodia as a new race. Following this remarkable discovery, an expedition collected for Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, the first complete museum specimen of an adult cupre in 1939. In 1940, the Harvard Museum published a comprehensive study on the structure of this animal by the Harvard mammologist Harold J. Coolidge, who discovered that the cupre had many characteristics of a primitive fossil ox. These differences were so striking that Coolidge classified this unique animal in a new genus, which he called Novibos. World War II and other events prevented scientists from learning more of the cupre and the environment in which it has survived as a living relic of an ancient stock, perhaps ancestral to both the wild and domestic cattle of today. This film, the first documentary color film to show banting, wild water buffalo, gar and cupre in their native habitat, was made during a 1951 field study of wild cattle in Cambodia, conducted by Charles Wharton of Cornell University under the auspices of the Coolidge Foundation. The expedition began at Phnom Penh, the quaint capital of Cambodia, which rules a kingdom rich in fish and rice, but having a total population less than one half that of New York City. From the moment of the first talks with the Cambodian ambassador in Washington, officials of this friendly country extended the most cordial cooperation. Vietnamese and Cambodian script give the title and purpose of the expedition. In early times, Cambodia rested under Hindu influences. Ancient music, religion, and dance passed down through generations bear unmistakable signs of cultures farther to the west, of India and Siam. civilization at its height between the 9th and 12th centuries ruled the entire Mekong Valley and the tributary Shan states. Mighty stone faces still stand above the devouring forest, attesting the magnificence of Angkor Thom, ancient capital city of the Khmers. A parade of stone animals on a famous wall at Angkor Thom is but a small part of a pageant of gigantic carvings depicting the art and religion of a great but vanished people.
With 60 soldiers of the Royal Army, the expedition sought the coupe and the other wild cattle in a series of surveys which often penetrated areas frequently raided and patrolled by bands of armed communists. Heavily armed base camps were then established as near as possible to the range of the wild oxen. To reach these areas required the cooperation of each village, which turned out man, woman, and child to build new bridges and open the road for the convoy to pass. The main camp, which supported from 60 to 90 men, required tons of rice and dried fish. Fish trapped in muddy pools and wild game supplemented this ration. Fried flowers, leaves of forest trees, and fermented fish oils boosted the vitamin content of the diet. From this large base camp, a jeep was often used to search the park-like wilderness. For longer trips, needing a heavier escort of soldiers, elephant and ox carts made a lively and useful team. Ox carts were the most reliable transportation. They were used to carry bed rolls and heavy bags of rice. Either of these are improved by dunking in a flooded stream, as we see here. But such conditions are unusual. Dry stream beds and parched throats are the order of the day in northern Cambodia. For water during the dry season is limited to muddy water holes. A thousand years ago, at least half of the present Kupre range was the center of a vast and thriving Khmer Empire. In searching for wild cattle, Field parties passed ancient temples, now crumbling and uninhabited, save by the cobra and the leopard. Omar Khayyam may have been thinking of a similar half-buried ruins in Asia Minor, when he wrote, They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Yamshid gloried and drank deep. This spectacled cobra tried to take refuge in one of the large termite mounds so common in the home of the wild oxen. Threatened by the close approach of a guide, it rises in anger and follows every movement with rapt attention. Giant trees clutch and smother the centuries-old sandstone. These tall hardwoods provide an aerial highway swiftly traveled by a master of wingless flight, the gibbon. Male gibbons generally have a black coat, while female gibbons of this area are golden yellow. Here, the photographer is racing between the animal and its refuge in the denser forest. Gibbons inhabit larger patches of dense forest, scattered here and there in the common open or savanna forest. These clumps of heavy monsoon forest are slowly being destroyed by annual fires set by the natives. Without such fires, however, the open aspect of the Kupre habitat might in time disappear. parties entered typical Kupre habitat, the search for the elusive beasts was intensified. Cambodian hunters served as guides and trackers and led their groups, generally on foot, through mile after mile of trackless grassland and forest. <laughs> 